Okay. So right now, what I want to look at with you is I want to look at what is allowable stress, what is a safety factor. Um, so the things that I want you to look for and to make sure you understand is what is maximum stress, what is allowable stress, and uh, what is a safety factor. Okay. To do this, the first thing I want to look at is what is um, what is maximum stress? Make sure you understand that concept. And so we'll look at this thing in a minute. But right now, if you, if you have any sort of material, if you have a rod, if you have um, something made out of um, A36 steel or anything, there's going to be a maximum stress that it can hold before it yields or before it breaks. And that is what we call the maximum stress. And so when you're designing something or building something, you want to make sure that you're not going to go over that maximum stress or your bridge or your, whatever you're making is going, to, is going to break and it's going to be a disaster. And so make sure you are not going over that maximum stress. And that's where we come up with allowable stress. Allowable stress is our, like, our safety limit. We do not want to push that maximum stress when we're building something. So we come up with something called allowable stress. And Allowable stress is significantly less than maximum stress, and that is what we use as our maximum for what we want our piece to, or the maximum stress we want our piece to, to go through. And we use something like called a safety factor to get that. And so um, our allowable, the, the formula we use is our, our allowable stress, and we use sigma allow for that. Our allowable stress is equal to our maximum stress divided by our safety factor. And that'll give us a stress that is allowable stress that is significantly less than maximum stress. And we'll use that so we aren't pushing or risking um, our piece from, from yielding or breaking or anything like that. Okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at this piece um, that I put together. We got a, uh, a rod with the upper half has a slightly less diameter, uh, while the lower uh, rod has a, a bigger diameter. This one has one inch diameter, this one has a two inch diameter. And we're going to pretend like they're made out of two different types of material. And so these two different types of material have different strengths, they have a different uh, maximum stress that they can hold. And so we're going to say this top rod has a maximum stress of 145,000 psi, while this bottom stress, this bottom maximum stress is um, 75,000 psi. Now, what we want to find here is we want to find the maximum force that we can apply on a, on our piece um, before it passes our allowable stress. And so we have to find out what our allowable stresses are so we aren't pushing this um, maximum stress limit. So let's do that first. We're going to find the maximum stress, for the, the allowable stress for each of these pieces first. So the allowable stress of this piece is going to be, if you remember, um, 145,000 uh, divided by our safety factor. And the safety factor we're going to use for this problem is a safety factor of 1.5. So we'll divide it by 1.5. And so that is going to come out being equal to um, 96,700 uh, uh, PSI. So that's our new, that is our sigma allow. That's the most we want this piece to feel stress of. And so now with this piece, we do the same thing. Sigma allow is equal to 75,000 divided by 1.5. And that will come out to be uh, 50,000 PSI. Okay? All right, so we found our new, uh, maximum. That's the most we want either of these to be. Now, if you're looking at this, you might assume that this piece, the top piece, is going to break first, which in often cases you may be right because it has a smaller diameter. But you got to remember as well that they're different types of materials, so they have different 
strength, so you might not want to make that assumption as to what it's going to break first. You're going to have to solve for it. And so we know because of the different diameters that each is going to have a different stress um, in the top piece as there is in the bottom piece. And they may not both um, achieve the sigma allow at the same time. So we have to find out which is going to, um, if, we, if we increase the force, which is going to reach its allowable stress first, and then we can um, find out what our maximum force is going to be so that nothing on this piece breaks. Okay. Um, so to do that, what I want to do is I want to make an assumption, uh, just a pretend assumption, and I'm going to say, okay, I think that this top piece is going to break first. And, or, yeah, I think this top piece is going to break first because it's probably safe to make that assumption, but we're going to find out if it's going to break first. And so we're going to, we're going to solve for it assuming that that piece is going to break first. So we're going to say the stress and this, we want the stress in this piece to be equal to its allowable stress, which is a 96,700 PSI. So we're going to solve for the force for that piece. We're going to say 96,700, um, and that's our stress, uh, sigma allow, is equal to the force divided by the cross-sectional area of this piece, which we know is pi times 0.5 squared. Since the diameter is 1 inch, the radius is 0.5. And so when we solve for P in this equation, P will come out being equal to 75.95 kilopounds. Now I converted it into kilopounds. You'll probably come out with something um, closer to 75,950, which is fine. I just converted mine into kilopounds right there. And so now that we've found that, we want to make sure if that force is applied in this piece as well, that it's not going to break. And so we're going to, um, we're going to plug it into um, the uh, stress equation for that. And we're going to do 75, and let's convert it back to pounds, 75,950 pounds divided by um, its cross-sectional area, which is pi um, times 1 inch squared. And when we do that, we will come out with um, a stress of 24,175 um, pounds, or PSI. Okay, so we made that assumption and we found that the stress in this bottom piece is going to be a good deal less than 50,000 PSI. So we were right. We were right to assume that this is going to be first. So this has got to be where the maximum um, stress, the allowable stress is going to be applied. Now, if we were wrong, and if this answer was greater than 50,000 piece, then this piece might break, or it might, it'll, be, it'll be way higher than sigma allows. So we know that that cannot be the maximum force. It's above its maximum force. So then we would solve this problem again, assuming that this is where your maximum stress is going to be. And you would do the same thing with this piece. So awesome. So let's make sure that when you're solving a problem like this, or you're dealing with um, maximum stresses and allowable stresses in a piece like this, that you understand that um, you're not sure exactly where the maximum stress or the allowable stress needs to be applied. So you got to solve for both sides. Um, one of them is going to break first. We don't know which. So make an assumption and start from there and see what happens. But make sure that nothing's going to break. Awesome. Just make sure you understand these things and uh, how to solve a problem like that.